All right. So it says, okay, let me read this. So David is saying, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. And then here is what I want to say. For thou hast magnified thy word above your name. Hallelujah. So basically God is saying even his name, like his word is even above. So when God says something, he has to honor it. There is no other choice. Amen. So when this man, maybe this man knew that revelation. So when God spoke and this man did what God said, it had to happen. Hallelujah. So what I'm telling you today is um, if God has spoken in your life, and you do it, it's a guarantee that it will happen. Now, you may be sitting here and say, God does not speak to me. Or God has not spoken anything to me. Or no prophet has been sent to my house to tell me, does say the Lord. You know, this is, this is the word. This is, this is God's word here. If you speak this word, God is saying that he has exalted this word above his name. Amen. Amen. So even when you are doing things like let's pray for, you know, let's pray for the sick, let's pray for this situation, and you call the name, you call the word of God and you apply that situation, this word is exalted. And there is no way God will not honor it. Hallelujah. Which is why sometimes in this world you see people applying, people who are even non Christians apply, uh, apply Christian principles, but God has no choice. Because the word has already been spoken and God will honor it. Amen? If you, so many people, so many people who are non Christians, they are doing actually, they are applying principles of God without knowing. Some, some of them actually don't even know. That's the sad thing. Some of them don't even know that they are applying the principles of God and actually they even reap. So for us Christians, since we know that revelation, let's do what the word of God says and God has no choice but to do it. Amen? So I kind of digress there, but this man was doing that. So God spoke, and he did. Hallelujah. So, and then, um, every time you receive a miracle, and that's my kind of second point, is every time you receive a miracle, people notice. Hallelujah. Every time you get something or God does something in your life, people will see. So they said his neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed he was. You see, people have read people in your neighborhood, your neighbors, you know, people you grew up together. Let's say God has not. They will notice, right? They will notice, they will, they will speak. And then um, others, say, others say, no, he looks like him. Hallelujah. I can imagine some of my friends I grew up with, if maybe they run into this video on Facebook, they may look, whoa. Is this Sylvain you grew up with now? Because I'm telling you, I was preaching was the last. I don't even know how I ended up here, by the way. When, uh, <laughs> when I joined the church, I, I'm a technical person, so I joined the church interested in cameras. I wanted to you know, learn how to do camera stuff. Uh, so that's actually one of the reasons why I joined ministry. So I'll be on cameras, I'll be on sound. Um, so every Sunday, that was my commitment, to be honest. So, and... I, and I liked it. I liked it, but preaching or anything was not even close to what I was thinking. So I'm sure some of them will say, hey, is this the guy we used to know? You know, but when God has done a miracle, it happens. So some say, no, it doesn't look like him. Because when you are changed by God, it's you are a new being. Hallelujah. So and then, uh, but he himself <laughs> insisted. He says, I'm the man. So they started questioning him. How then were your eyes open? They demanded. The man said, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, then I could see. The word of God is very simple sometimes. We overcomplicate it. Basically what he's saying, he's telling his friends, look, I met a man called Jesus. He told me what to do. I did it, and it happened. No, 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 no complication. So he basically followed what God told him. He did it, and it happened. Amen. So, um, so verse twelve says, "Where is this man?" They asked, and then he said, "I don't know." Then, um, as we jump to verse thirteen, 
they brought up to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. Now the day which Jesus had made them, now the day which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eye was a Sabbath. Now, if you know, uh, back in the days, the Sabbath was uh, a holy. You are not supposed to do anything on the Sabbath. So on the Sabbath, even if you saw, you know, something, Sabbath was a religious, you know, day. So the religious people right now, they have their eyes zoned on Jesus. They basically, they know the miracle has happened, but now they want to question. They want to question. So sometimes in your life, there are people who always want to question things. You, they see the miracle in front of you. The man was blind, he sees. What's there to question? But we can learn many things from here. So let's, uh, let's continue. Uh, now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's blind on the Sabbath. Therefore, the Pharisees asked him how, asked him how he had received his sight. He said, he put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed, now I see. Some of the Pharisees say, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others say, how can a sinner do such miraculous signs? So they were divided. Finally, they turned to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes that he opened. The man replied, he is a prophet. The Jews still did not believe that he had been blind, and he had received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. So you can see this, you know, a miracle has happened. The man has given his testimony. It's there in the eyes. But there are still folks or people who are still doubting. And most of it is the religious, um, from, the religious um, uh, from the religious crowd. Uh, and what my takeaway was this is um, sometimes as uh, we live our lives, there are things that God will do for you. It's there. And... People will just refuse to, you know, people refuse to see. And you can argue, you can say until your, um, your face turns blue, but sometimes your, all you can say is, look, I was blind, but now I see. That's your testimony. Sometimes you don't even have to overcomplicate it. I was blind, but now I see. I followed what God said, and now I see. Hallelujah. And I want to say that following what God said, I, I think I said it before, is following what God says is the, um, is the key, is the key to your miracle. And I want to emphasize that, because I, I, was, I, was I want to emphasize that, is God is not a respecter of persons. So it doesn't matter where you are born, whether the condition you came in, whether you are born from the president's family, or you are born from the remote village on the planet where there is no even no signal. God is not a respecter of person. If you follow God's word, it will happen. I really want to emphasize on that. Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will happen to you. Because most of the time as human beings, we, we are trying to gain positions, trying to gain positions with other men. You know, you see the mayor of Ashford here. I want to be close to the mayor of Ashford. He goes to Nando's. Let me go to Nando's every day. Maybe I may meet him. Uh, he goes to where. So men are always trying to get, you know, trying to get connections with other men. But it's actually the wrong, you are looking in the wrong area. You know, at work, people work in, uh, you know, what you see people playing, they call it playing politics. You know, people play politics to gain favor with their bosses, their th you know. But all you need to do is actually follow God's instructions for your miracle. You do not need to struggle, seek positions, and do all these, you know, things that people do behind the scenes. Because if you follow what God says, it will happen. Amen? Amen. For it says, seek ye first my kingdom and my righteousness, and then all these things will be given to you. Um, and on that little scripture, his kingdom and his righteousness... Um, again, I'm going to do a quick Bible study. Basically, that means to be in right standing with God. Every day you need to be examine yourself. You want to be in right standing with God. If, uh, if I'm in this country and I am not paying my taxes and I'm earning money, am I in right standing with the government? Right? I'm not. So if anything was to happen and I'm not in right standing with the government, you know, 
they can come and you know, and they have rather here the tax authority, they are very tough. If you owe taxes, yeah, those guys will come and get you. Right? So if you're not right in right standing with the government, with the authority, there's consequences. So God is saying, seek first my kingdom, be in right standing with me. Then all these things you seek, they will come. So in this scripture, what I want to emphasize is right standing with God is the key to your miracle. This man did what God told him to do. He was in right standing. Afterwards, things happen and the miracle happened. Amen. Amen. So we go to um, verse 18. It says, the Jews did not believe that he had been blind. Again, some people just are refusing to believe that a miracle has happened. This man was blind from birth. They knew him in town. Uh, he, the, the, Jews received, the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and he had received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. Is this your son, they asked. Is, 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 the one, uh, is, this the, is this your son, they asked. Is this the one you say was born blind? How is it that now he can see? Um, I pray, I pray that may Lord have mercy on us that we actually don't acknowledge the work that, it is, uh, that God is doing. Uh, because we, we really have to be careful not to turn our hearts to be, you know, to be resistant to the work of God um, that happens among us. There's God is always doing a miracle in us. And we have to, as Christians, um, we have to be conscious of that and not take everything as casual. Because, I mean, the Pharisees, they have their own motives, but basically they're treating a big miracle casually, as if nothing happened. So, and then the parents replied on verse 20, we know he is our son, the, par uh, the parents answered. And we know he was born blind, but now he can see. But oh, sorry, let me let me start with verse twenty. We know he is our son. The parents answered, and we know he was born blind. But how he can see, or who opened his eyes, we don't know. Ask him. He is of age, and he will speak for himself. So they basically said, "Hey, look, we don't know. Uh, Say so we know, but." Say he, we know he was born blind, but how he can see, ask him, he is of age. They could have given the testimony right there, but they refused. And you are going to see why they refused to give the testimony. Um, so he says, his parents, his, his parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For they already, for his parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For already the Jews had decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was Christ will be put out of the synagogue. I want to stay there for a while um, and ask you, are you acknowledging Christ publicly? Are you acknowledging Christ? It doesn't mean you go in the middle of the street and say, but are you acknowledging Christ among your friends? Are you acknowledging your Christ? Are you acknowledging Jesus? Now, no, uh, most of, not even young people, I think all the people are using social media. Are you acknowledging Christ on platforms? Or are you afraid like these parents? They saw a miracle happen. Right? So imagine here you were healed this morning or something. God did a miracle for you. And you are afraid to speak about it because you don't want to look bad in front of your friends. Or you don't want to look bad in front of your boss. Or maybe you are worried you're not going to be invited to the next get together. Like they were, they were worried because they... They had other motives because if we acknowledge, we will be put out of the synagogue. So my question is, are you acknowledging Christ or are you afraid because of things that may happen? Um, and my encouragement to you is, as this song that uh, they were saying, as this song we were singing is, uh, we will not be silent, but we will always worship God. Amen? So always, always... Um, Always acknowledge Jesus because in Revelation says, those who don't acknowledge me publicly, even God will say I will not, I will, I will, I will disown them. Amen. So um, let's be conscious of that and also let's, the reason why the parents did this, and I mentioned it before, is they were trying to seek favor or carry favor with man. They were trying to be in good standing with man. They were trying to be in the right place with man. When the Bible tells us not to do that, the Bible tells us to be in right standing with God. 
And God is not a respecter of persons. I'm going to keep saying that. If you do what God says, it will happen. Hallelujah. Because uh, if you put your trust in man, anything can happen to a human being. Um, in Jeremiah, it says uh, that we have, we have just little flowers that can, a human being can disappear. You know, human beings, may, he may look powerful today. Tomorrow, he is, he is gone, like a small flower. So you don't want to put your trust, you don't want to put your, you don't want to please a human being. That's my whole point that I'm emphasizing, is, uh, is always try to be in right standing with God, because that way, you know, in right standing with God, anything and his blessings will happen to you. Amen. Amen. So basically, the, pa- the parents basically said, we don't know, pretty much I'm paraphrasing, uh, but the reason why they said that, they knew, the reason why they said that is because they were afraid what will happen. Basically, they were looking at other man's eyes and afraid to say what, they, what had happened. So, verse 23, that was why the parents said he is of age, ask him. Uh, a second time, they summoned the man who, was, uh, who, who had been blind. Um, say, give glory to God, they said. We, we know this man is a sinner. He replied, whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I know is I was blind, but now I see. I had already said this. Sometimes your testimony is that simple. Sometimes your testimony is very simple. Is look, it was like this. Now it's like that. Theological people, other people will try to try to explain you. Oh, give us the verse. No, Bible is very simple. I was in this situation. Now I'm this. This is what happened. Sometimes that's your testimony. Amen. So don't be afraid to give your testimony uh, because this is a good testimony to God. This was the situation before. I applied the word of God. Now this is what's happening. Amen? Amen. And um, as you go through life, and we're going to go through it. As you go through life, I think it's situations happen to everybody. Um, I remember when uh, when uh, I was giving a testimony, uh, I actually never had a girlfriend. I got married when I was 30. And uh, in my life, I actually, I never had a girlfriend. You know how people date? So I never had a girlfriend. I think if I can, glor- I, so Gloria, well, my, I don't think we were even, we called one of the girlfriend a boyfriend. So I think some of my friends, I went to church. So I went back to church in the U.S. I told uh, some of my friends, say, look, I'm engaged. So I was about 28 years old. They're like, what? You have never had, we have never seen you with anybody. How are you engaged? I say, look, that's the, look. I was single. God blessed me. He told, cause God told me to go. To I had met uh, Mama some in some church. He had invited and said, God said, go to that church. Say, I was single. I went to this church, and now I'm engaged. What do you want me to tell you? You know, sometimes it's that it's that simple. Like, oh, we have never seen you go on a date with. Them. I said, look, it's that's a situation. That's the miracle that happened. I don't have many words for it. Is I was single. I'm engaged. Actually, my wedding day is this time. So, <laughs> amen. And that was my testimony. You know, so they asked me, oh, but you're supposed to be dating. You're supposed to, you know, go, uh, go out, go to some dates, get to know the person. I, I, me, I just told them, hey, look, at that's the situation. I mean, this is what's happening. And now I'm getting married. Say, wait, so this, where's the person? I said the person is in England. <laughs> now, now that even caused a lot of confusion. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, please, that's your testimony sometimes is this is a situation and this was happening. And actually, even uh, on that point, I want to encourage uh, any young person who's, lo- not young person, anyone who's looking to get married is you follow what God says. It will happen. You don't have to go around dating everybody in town to find your wife. That is actually, that is not, or to find your husband. Oh, go on a date here, go on a date here. That's what the world says. But it's actually not, um, it, it doesn't have to be that way. It's not even biblical, to be fair. Because every time you are in these relationships, you are giving a little piece of yourself. By the time you get married, you have been, you know, uh, for those of you who have been doing that, God has mercy on you. Start, you know, start being in right standing with God. Don't be in the right standing with your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Leave that alone. Be in right standing with God. God will bring you the person. And then people will say, isn't this the man who was in Fountain Church who could not even, 
I don't know, who could not even have money to buy a bus, or who could not even do something, but now look what God has done for him. Amen? Or even for women, same thing. Um, I want to emphasize on that because uh, I know this world is preaching on many things to our young people uh, on what they need to do on uh, relationships and what they need to do, but you have to go against the conventional wisdom. You do what God says you do. Be in right standing with him. Then when you're in right standing with him, he's going to bring you the right person. Hallelujah. I know I'm speaking to somebody. Uh, it wasn't in my notes, but yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Um, amen. Uh, so we go to um, verse uh, 20, 27. So basically, they're already questioning him. They're asking him many questions. All that happened to this man was he was blind. He can see. The miracle has happened. People are refusing. They just keep asking questions, many things. So he said, I have, I have told you already, and you did not listen. What do you want me? What do you want to hear again? Do you want to become his disciples too? So the man said, look, I have already told you what's the situation. What's going on? And then the reality started happening. Then they hurled hurled insults at him and said, you are these fellow disciples. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but as this fellow, we don't even know where he comes from. So imagine this man has grown around town. People have seen his situation. He has told them what's happened. They keep refusing, and then instead of even being happy for him, now they have started insulting him. Amen? I had one pastor say, he says, when you give your testimony to your friends, don't be excited in giving your testimony. Always look at them and see their reaction. Hallelujah. He says, when you are giving your testimony, oh, God has done this for me. You are telling your friends, you are excited and jumping. Take a moment and see their reaction. You will see. Some of them won't be happy for you. And you will know there's something wrong. (laughs) Amen? (laughs) So, (laughs) I encourage you, um, (laughs) always be happy when uh, God does something for your brother or sister. Amen? When people are giving testimony, we should all be jumping. Because if God, actually, if God can do it for him or her, he can do it for you. Because that's the message that they were missing. They said, this man was born blind. Look at, in those days, healing a blind person. I read about it. That no prophets, it was happening back in the Old Testament. Like healing a blind person was very rare. Jesus did it in front of them. And instead of believing that if he did it for this person, he can do it for me, they missed the whole point. They started doing insults to him. So if God has done something for your brother, a brother comes here and says, for example, God paid off my mortgage. Instead of you feeling bad about it, or maybe saying, ah, why didn't he pay for mine instead? Maybe I need it more than even him. Be happy for him, because if God did it for him, he can do it for you. Because God is not a respecter of persons. That's the key. God is not a respecter of persons. If he can do it for him, and actually the question will be, my brother, tell me, what happened? Tell me the secret. Maybe that man spent 40 days fasting. You know, be happy for him. Ask questions. Maybe he can give you a little bit of a secret. But point is, if God can do it for one person, he can do it for you. Hallelujah. And be excited for your brethren and sisters when something good happens to them. It's very important. Um, It's very important as Christians uh, because that builds actually even unity in church or even in family and everywhere. Hallelujah. Um, So verse, verse 30 now. The man answered, now this is remarkable. So they have gone back and forth. Uh, You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly man who does his will. I want you to stay there. Um, uh, Stay on that verse a little bit. It says, God listens to the godly man who does his will. Uh, in another scripture in the book of James, he says the prayer of a faithful man. Let me look for it. Uh, 
it says basically uh, if anyone knows whether scripture is they can help but it says the prayer of a faithful man availed much um I no find this, but basically god listens to a man who does his will so let me tell you a little secret if you are going to some you are going through something the first thing you want to know is find a man in your town find a man in your church who actually you know follows God's will and ask him to pray for you. Because God listens to that man and anything that that man will ask and pray for, it will happen. Hallelujah. So in a church like this one, you have pastors, you have elders. Um, find them. Find, ask them to pray for you because God listens to those people. And if God listens to those people, it will happen. Now, it will be good if all of us were following God's will and we were in right standing with God. If all, all of us Christians were doing this, trust me, most of the world problems will be solved. Because God will listen to our prayers. But the problem is some of us, we pray and God does not listen. Because that's what the Bible is saying, by the way. He says he listens uh, to the godly man who does his will. So this translates to there is some other people who God does not listen to. Amen? So <laughs> it's uh, our prayer. May God have mercy on us that we are among those ones he listens to. Amen? I will not want to go to a church where my pastor, God does not listen to him. That's actually a very scary thing. A very scary thing. Imagine you're going to a church, your pastor prays, or your leaders pray, and God does not listen to them. Because they don't do the will of God. Um, yeah, yeah, I know <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, yeah it's it's dangerous. So may we be among those people that God listens to. Amen, amen. Um, then verse thirty three says, "Nobody has ever had opening of eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could he could do nothing." To this they replied, "You were." <laughs> You were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lectures? Then they threw him out. So you can see the progression of this whole scripture. All this man did was, somebody say action. He performed an action that God told him to do. That's all he did. He performed an action that God told him to do. He gave his testimony and it ended up him being thrown, being rejected. That's my next point is sometimes when God does a, something big for you or some big testimony, don't, accept, don't expect acceptance from everybody. Actually, when you are trying to walk in the will of God and trying to walk in the things of God, it's highly more likely that you are going to suffer rejection. Amen? Amen. And be prepared for it. I'm speaking to young people. If you go to your school and you start being different at school or you start being different at location where you are in or you go to your workplace, everyone after 5 p.m. they invite you, let's go to the pub. Here you have many pubs. You know, so let's go to the pub. You keep saying no because you have met Jesus and you have acted on his word. You should expect actually rejection from people. You should expect to be thrown out of their social gatherings. That's expected. Don't be, don't be afraid. Don't, don't be surprised. Why, why is it now I'm following what Jesus does? Now I even have less friends. You should actually have less friends. The more you get closer to God and he takes things off, you will see that the friends you used to do, you used to have, the friends that you used to speak to, they will dwindle in numbers. Amen? Amen. So I want to emphasize on this, that this man, something great happened in his life. Something great. He, man, he was born blind. Something great happened in his life. And in the end, he ended up being thrown out. Hallelujah. So um, let's not this, let's, let, let know this surprise us because as Christians, you should expect that. Jesus himself was rejected. Uh, so as Christians, your, your surface area dwindles. As you get closer to God. Amen? Amen. So, in closing, um, I would just like to summarize uh, just my points. Is um, a few things is action. 
God expects you to act. He wants to work in partnership with you. So if you are praying for something, I've been praying for something, pray but also do. Because faith without, uh, faith without works is dead. Amen? This man, if he had not acted and actually went to the pool, nothing would have happened. So may God help us to know what we need to act on. There is something that may be, some, it could be a situation. This, this reveals a situation that has been going on for a long time. A man who was born blind. He doesn't tell us his age. He could have been 30, he could have been 40, he could have been 50. But it, what, it, what it represents is a situation that had been going on for a long time. A situation been going for a long time. There could be a situation that's been going for a long time. People are judging. Oh, maybe the reason why this person is not married is she was a sinner or something is happening. But it happened for God's will. So a situation that's been happening for a long time, when you are in that period of that situation, anything is you need to act on what God says. Because in that action, that's where your breakthrough is coming. Amen? Then, uh, to summarize, my second point is um, when you act on what God says, is you are placing his word. Uh, you are basically, when you act on what God has said, you are kind of putting God in a spot that he, can, he, he has no choice but to do what he has, um, to do what he has said. Because as we read, his word, he places his word above his name. Amen? That's very important. If you get this revelation, if you really, if somebody gets this revelation that God places his word above his name, you will actually speak the word of God in any situation. Because if, if you find any situation that's not going on right in your life, what you need to do is just speak the situation of God. Sorry, speak the word of God to that situation. Amen? So, practical terms. Your children are acting up as a parent. Sometimes the best is not to go fight them, call them in the living room, and, you know, there's, there's time for that. I'm not saying there's no time. So, there's a time for doing that, right? But sometimes it's you actually speak the word of God over those children. Sometimes when even they are 50 miles away. Amen? Amen. Um, uh, my sister, you said your daughter is going to school in Manchester. She could be in Manchester. You are here in Ashford. You are speaking the word of God over her life. And whatever you speak will eventually happen because it's just a matter of time. Amen. Amen. So that was my second point as uh, I summarize. Um, then um, the third point as, um, as I close is, um, to summarize is, don't be... Uh, if you remember the parents of this man, they refused to, to give a testimony or they refused to speak what had happened because they were afraid of their social standing. That's pretty much it. You know, I want to look cool on social media. I don't want to take any pictures in church so that people don't see me. Maybe, I don't know, an example like that one. You know, let's say you are the coolest person on social media and... Uh, you, you say, no, let me not take a picture. I don't want anyone to see me in church. Or, you know, it could be anything. I'm giving an example. Basically, your concern is man instead of God. These parents, their child, I can, I, I mean, I can feel the pain they had uh, in life. Imagine your child is born and he's blind. That must be very painful. So all this time, the miracle happens in front of them. Instead of acknowledging God, they are actually worried about man. And trust me, my brothers and sisters, that actually can, that can happen. Let's not even judge them. We have to be conscious. It, it can easily happen. It happened to Peter. If you remember the story of Peter, Peter, Peter disowned Jesus. Peter disowned Je Peter was very close with Jesus, very close. And he reached a point where he actually, they, they told him, like, hey, you are one of the, he said, no, I don't know Jesus, actually. And the Bible says, actually, when they insisted, he, he insulted them. He kind of told them, go away. You know, he insulted them. He, he refused. So let's not judge these people very quickly because it can happen to you and me. So we just need to be watchful of that um, so that we don't end up in that situation. Because Lord have mercy on us. If God, if God does something great for us and then we refuse to give him a testimony or we refuse to acknowledge his name because we are worried of our social standing or our standing with a human being. 
right? Because our goal is not to please the human being, which, bring, which brings me to my final conclusion is your goal is to be in right standing with God. So I want to close on that one. Is Our goal is to be always, as a Christian, you, your, your focus is, basically that's the question you should ask yourself, is am I in right standing with God? You know, they ask, like, am I in right standing with God? That's, you know, am I in right standing with, <laughs> you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these things will be given to us. So am I in right standing with God? Um, that's the question we're supposed to um, keep evaluating ourselves. Um, I was listening to a preaching uh, a few days ago, and this person was saying, the reason why God gives you, adds years to you, or adds, you know, many days to your life, it's not, it's not that you enjoy happy birthday every day and you, um, and you enjoy life. It's, I mean, it's, he, God, God is a father. He wants to enjoy your life. But the reason why he does that, actually, you wake up every day, he gives you another chance. It's basically another chance to be in right standing with him. Amen? So every day you are getting is an opportunity God has given you. Hey, my brother, my sister, be in right standing with me. It's literally, that's it. You wake up, that's, hey, I'm giving you another opportunity. Be in right standing with me. Continue to be in right standing with me. Then all these things that you are seeking will be given to you. Hallelujah. Amen. I know I touched on many points, uh, but I'm sure the Holy Spirit will speak to you uh, uh, on what, you, uh, what applies to your uh, particular situation. Amen. Amen. So let's, uh, if you don't mind, so let's uh, go ahead and pray. And, uh, and we'll close this one. Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you uh, again for today. Lord, we thank you for your word. Your word does not come void, and your word is exalted above your name. Lord, I pray that this revelation will come to us. And you, yeah, you will even continue to reveal um, and continue to reveal and show us this revelation during the week. Lord, I pray that there will be an awakening of the word of God among us, that we will speak your word so that situations and things we want to change happen. Lord, I pray that as you do miracles for our lives, that we will be among those people that acknowledge you, but we will not be among those people that resist and disown what you have done. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.